Right, hey, welcome to ConvertingEV.com. Um, we picked up a Chevy Volt battery pack at a salvage yard, and I wanted to run through some of the things you need to know if you're going to pick up one for your own conversion. Um, I really like this battery. There's a lot of options for batteries, but this one's one of my favorites for a few reasons. Um, one reason is budget-wise. Uh, they're cheaper than buying new lead-acid batteries uh, for a conversion. Uh, you can get them at a salvage yard for a first-gen Volt, so up to 2015. You can get it for under $2,000, around $2,000. I've bought two of them so far. For the second gen volts, which are a higher battery capacity and a higher power output, um, those ones you can get at a salvage yard for around $3,000. And they're a great option too. Uh, and they're the same form factor, some differences in electronics and BMS inside, um, which is battery management system. But uh, if you buy one at a salvage yard, you, you have these connections up front. You can come. So they have a charger and they, there's an electronic heater in here. There's some controls. Um, this is to a DC-DC converter. The APM is what they call it on the volt. And then you have your main outputs. Normally, these, this, volt, this battery pack gets, I mean, it's anywhere from like three, above three, 300 to 400 volts. Um, the actual range we'll get to in more detailed discussions later. Um, but these, uh, these could be extremely dangerous if they're 400 volts. But I don't have to really worry when I'm moving it around and shipping because they have main contactors inside here. They have a, an electronics unit that's about here to here inside. And there's two large contactors that can run 300 amps each. They're actually really expensive contactors and great for your own build. So we're going to salvage those. There's also three smaller automotive 12 volt contactors that will run 30 amps each inside. Oh, sorry about the airplane noise. Um, that are inside and we'll reuse those too. They're not cheap either. So there's a lot of great parts we'll reuse out of this, out of, that come inside of this battery pack. Um, but when you buy it, you actually can't check the voltage from right here. I'm still working to see if we can get a way to run 12 volts to any of the, of the other plugs to activate the contactors, but I don't think there is. I think they're CAN bus controlled. So I think you can't check if the battery pack is good without tearing it open. Uh, one salvage yard I've been to, they said that if I just take these outside bolts off and opened it and checked, they would still accept it, return back and get my money back. Um, if it was bad, but one salvage yard said they wouldn't uh, because they've had someone open it up and they fried something inside in the, in the quick little time that he was checking. So sometimes it's a risk. I also like them because you can get them, uh, the cars are getting, or there's a lot of these cars out there and there's a lot of them ending up in salvage yards now. So if you go on carpart.com, you can search the battery, main battery pack of a Volt and it'll show up with all the salvage yards nearby that has the Volt battery pack. Um, so you can get one local instead of shipping a giant battery pack to your house. Uh, or I had to drive three, three and a half hours for one, four hours for the other. So it's not that easy of a trip. Um, but it's, it's uh, definitely still the economical way to do it. Um, and then if you find the car wrecked in a salvage yard, the battery was probably working when the car got wrecked, as opposed to buying a flooded car or a pack just on eBay. You have no idea uh, what the battery pack was like. So you can buy them on eBay. That's not the, most, the cheapest way to do it, uh, but they are available there too. So to open it up, to test it, there's a few things we got to do. First, we got a 100,000 screws all the way around the outside. Um, we already pulled those out. They're just all around the rim of the battery. And then don't forget, over here, we got, there's four screws on the top of this. You're going to want to, of the plug here, the fuse plug, you'll want to pop these off too. Um, and then back over here, there's, there's a few around here that you might forget too. Uh, but after that, this cover just lifts right off. Um, pull your fuse plug. Uh, hopefully you got the fuse plug. If you're going to the salvage yard, ask for it. They may not include it with, your, with the battery. So ask for it if you can. But let's go ahead and pop it open and check the voltages. It's all, I've never opened this pack up yet. So this will be the first time for me. So, cool. Um, it's a great battery as well, because even with the higher mild volts, 
you do not get very much degradation. The Nissan Leaf batter batteries, especially the early ones, they had a ton of degradation, meaning the battery capacity really diminishes over time and over use. Every time you charge all the way up to the maximum that the battery can handle, it makes the battery degrade a little bit. And the Volt is a hybrid, kind of. It's always electric drive, it always runs an electric motor, but they have a four cylinder, cylinder gas motor in the Volt uh, as well. And as soon as the battery goes down to, I forget the numbers, it's 40 or 30% capacity, they immediately kick on the gas motor and it runs the engine off of the gas motor. It, it runs the, the gas motor runs a generator, which runs the electric motor, the drive motor. So the battery pack is protected and never discharged too far. And then they only charge it up to 80% capacity. And at that kind of cycle on a lithium battery, it'll run, it'll, last for an extremely long time, the very, very little de degradation. So even an old salvage yard car, the battery could be close to brand new as far as how well it, it works. And the Volt only got around 30 mile of electric range on the first gen, around 60 miles on the second gen. Um, and that varies a lot on temperature and stuff, but that's because they limit it to that 80% down to 50, 40, 30%. I don't remember the numbers, but um, and that it protects the battery pack. So you can be, feel pretty confident going to a salvage yard that it's still gonna be a decent battery, especially if you can see pictures of the car and how it was wrecked. Um, the battery's down the center and then a little bit off to the sides. So if there's a major side impact, you might need to be worried. Um, safety, I don't have my high voltage gloves on, which is a no-no. Um, but a lot of you don't want to spend a few hundred bucks on high voltage gloves anyway, so you probably won't be using them. So as soon as you open it up, a good thing to do is you'll see each module. Well, there's a lot to know about these. Go ahead and go to uh, the Weber State Automotive channel, search that on YouTube, and search the Chevy Volt battery pack. They run a two hour lecture decomposing everything in this battery, um, explaining every single element of it. So check that out if you want a ton of detail on the cells and the cooling and the, the battery management systems and the capacity of each module. I'm gonna just run to make sure that you know how to check it. But just for safety, it's really good to break your battery down into lower voltage sections. The fuse plug that we pulled out, it breaks the battery in half. So this is all in, in series. And when you pop this fuse plug, it breaks it in half there. And here is now two sections of battery. So we have like 180 volts here and 100 and a little more, 200 something volts here, um, maybe a little less than that, but um, it breaks it in half, so that's a little safer, but each time you unscrew one of these uh, voltage, that we have a positive here and a negative here on this module, if you pop those off, this that now becomes a uh, 80 volt module. Then if you pop these plastic covers off, underneath there's bus bars just like this that you can remove and it breaks it down to 48 volt max modules and that's safe to work with. So that's always a good idea to break it all apart in your shop when you're not using it. If it's open and you're working on it, break it down to the smallest sections that you can. Um, and when you're putting it up to high voltage, have your gloves on, use insulated tools. Um, but we're not really doing any of that. All we're doing is checking to make sure it's uh, the cells are good. One thing to look for is swelling. If it's a bad battery, you'll see physical swelling in the cells. Nothing looks extreme here. You can go ahead and Google Chevy Volt battery cell swelling. You'll probably find images uh, with some intense um, swelling and how bad that looks. Um, it's cool, you can pop these all out, different sections. But let's take a look over here. I'm gonna show you how to check voltage on well, you can do it by large section, but you can also go cell by cell. So I'm gonna show you how to do both. So grab a, a multimeter. They're cheap. If you don't have one, you're gonna need one for your conversions. You don't need a nice one. So set it to voltage. Let's just check this whole bank. This bank has a, we can see on the side, on the other side is actually easier, but there's stickers that show um, the capacity of each module. We have a, tw a 24 volt pack, a 48 volt, and a 48 volt, and that's nominal voltage. So these together should be 
the 48 plus 48 plus 12. And my math is bad. What do we think that is? 80. <laughs> I can always edit that out, but <laughs> we'll find. Let's see what it is showing us for our positives and negatives. We're getting 115.2. So if we had a totally dead cell that would disconnect, we probably wouldn't even get voltage here. Um, so you can check that each module like that. You could, and that's actually check the total voltage. If we throw our fuse plug back in, we can now come over on this end. Now we have an extremely high voltage on the end here. Our, in here we have our, capac our uh, main contactors, which are just large relays. And we have our positive of the entire battery pack and our negative of the entire battery pack going into where our, our contactors are. And so these are live. This will kill you if you touch these. So I have rated for 1,000 volts on these leads. You'll see the CAT2, 1,000 volt CAT2 uh, on, the, on the leads. You want to make sure you have that if you're checking this kind of voltage. Um, so I'm going to check the total battery pack voltage. And we are getting 300 and almost 68 volts. That is a totally safe voltage for this to store at. That's right above nominal, and that makes me very happy to, have, to see that kind of thing. So that's kind of what you're looking for in a quick check. If you can pop this off at a salvage yard and just do that. Um, and then when you start breaking it down, you will want to check individual cells and see how balanced they are. So let's break this down so we're not going to kill ourselves. All right, to check individual cells, we're going to take, this is a satellite BMS unit. We're going to take it off real quick. Well, I guess you don't need to remove the whole unit from the cover, but we're going to take this cover off the top of the battery. So you got to pull these off, and I think that's really it. I'm going to grab a flat screwdriver, we're going to pop it off and check the cells. I'm going to grab a screwdriver. Try to do it without breaking plastic, but sometimes so you just pop these tabs and these covers come right off. Oh, and this one I got this, uh, I have this power line I got to slide out of the way. So here is the top of our cells. The Chevy Volt is a 96 series. So it's in lithium cells, there are, lithium cell is around 3.8 volts nominal. It varies depending on what Chinese ad you're looking at. But, um, and then there's 96 of those cells in series, but it's three parallel. There's three lithium packs inside of here, and, so, and then they have a positive and negative tab, and there, there's three parallel, and then they go in series like this, just wind back and forth, positive, negative, positive, negative. All the way down, we have our power bus bar for the 48 volt module. 48 volt module, power bus bar. These, this side, by the way, is just support. They're not carrying power, but this side is power, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. And these are the BMS leads that you will reuse. You'll cut these and reuse them. Uh, the wires, it's nice and clean in your build. So we're going to go ahead and check some cells. We're going to see how balanced they are. So I'm going to do, I did it backwards, so it shows negative, but it says 3.829. And then I can go ahead and jump up to the next set. 3.83, that's pretty balanced. 3. Point, uh oh, here, let's make sure, hopefully, I'm, yeah, 3.83. 3.83, you can do that all the way down, 3.83, that's awesome. Um, they should be, I've always expect them to be pretty darn balanced. The Volt does a great job at balancing them. Um, and when they're unplugged from the car, there is no parasitic drain on the circuitry that I know of. I've, I've bought one that sat over a cold winter in a salvage yard for over six months, and it was sitting at 3.8. 
and it's been perfect. I have it in this car actually. Um, so that's, that's why I like them. That's how you check voltages on them. You can do that on every cell. Um, and I'm excited to show you how we're going to work with them and put them in your own builds. But that's it for today. Thanks.